Hello, my name is Penny Heron, and today I'm going to share with you how to do a strip piece grandmother's flower garden from my book. This is a traditional grandmother's flower garden block, and this particular quilt is done in reproduction 30s and 40s fabric. That is when this block was really at its peak. Uh, everyone loved to make it because it took very little fabric. Most of the fabric used was a background fabric, which they could buy for about 10 cents a yard. And so the prints were the more expensive fabrics or what they were trying to conserve in feed sacks. So by just using little, this is about a two inch square of fabric, they could create these very intricate looking quilts in a very easy manner. So since these are randomly cut from uh, the fabric, and none of them are fussy cut, I developed a way that you can do about 20 of these blocks in four hours using this technique. So in the quilt that is uh, the focus of this book, these are all a solid fabric, so it doesn't show as much and have as much interest as it does when you're using these little mini prints. So I wanted to show you these first so you had an idea of what you could accomplish with this. So now we're going to remove this quilt and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create these. First, you go to the Landauer website and you download your templates on traditional copy paper. This isn't anything complicated, it isn't any special paper, just anything that you buy at a local office supply store. Then you're going to take it and put it face down on your ironing board, iron a piece of freezer paper to the back, and the freezer paper, you put the waxy side down. When you iron it, the polycarbonate that is on the back of the freezer paper melts a little bit and it will stick to this and form a very stiff template. So when you are looking at these, these templates, you'll notice that the edges that need turned are starred. So none of these edges on this particular template are going to be turned at all. The color of the fabric are in parens, so this means that this is blue fabric and this is fussy cut fabric. And this is the grandmother's flower garden block. This is the fussy cut fabric, so there is a dash line here, so I can line this up with the print on my fussy cut fabric and have my design centered exactly in the center of each one of my grandmother's flower garden. So each block takes one triple unit and two of the double strip units. So I prepared those and cut so I had a unit like this. Here are the three segments that I cut out of my templates so that I have two that have two units and one that has three. Now I'm going to take these and glue them to the wrong side of fabric strips to create the block. Here are two strips that are sewn together with the seam pressed open. I determined the width of this by measuring the grandmother's flower garden hexagon template from side to side. In this particular case, this is an inch and a half, so I cut my strips two inches wide, so that would give me my quarter of an inch seam allowance around the entire outside edge. So now I'm going to take this and glue them in position on this strip of fabric, matching this line to the seam line. I'll cut these apart and then take scissors to trim this approximately a quarter of an inch away on all sides. If you notice on this template, all sides are starred, so I am going to turn all the sides. Once it is trimmed like this, I just estimated a quarter of an inch, cut it with a pair of scissors, and this seam is sewn clear out to the outside edge. So I'm just going to pull apart a few threads here, and then I'm going to take my glue stick, a water-soluble glue stick I bought at the office supply store. It says it's permanent on here, but if you read the fine print, it's washable, so it comes out with warm water when I'm totally done with my project. And I'm going to take the glue stick and run it on the template and on the fabric because I want it to act as a double-sided tape. You have to make sure that you get glue into your seam allowance because I want this held down so when I turn the next side, I'm just literally folding it over and there's glue there to hold down that corner. And see how fast this is? Because the template is created with a double layer of paper, 
you have very crisp sides and this goes very quickly. So I'll continue turning this around the entire outside edge of the block and I'm going to have two pieces that look just like this. Now I need to create my center. If you remember, the center template had three strips of fabric, but these are the exact same size as the others, so the strips were cut two inches, and I fussy cut my center strip out of a piece of fabric, and when I fussy cut it, I just put a one inch line on the ruler down each one of these dots and cut an inch on each side of it so my pattern would be centered right down the center of that strip. Now remember these little dash lines here? Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to center this so that this is falling right in the center of that design and this is falling on the seam allowance and I'm going to glue those in place. So I want to match up the center and on the sides I'm going to have to make sure the same amount of the design is showing on each side. Put a little dab of glue on the back to hold it in place and I can glue these on the design. Now if you look at the front of this you can see that here's a, there's, this would be a very pretty center, so would these. So I can place those and continue to place them on the same strip of fabric, so I'm using all of those designs and I just have to make sure that I have at least a half an inch between these points because I need to be able to cut a seam allowance around each edge. Now I've learned that the width of my finger is about a half an inch, so as long as I can place my finger between those templates, I know I have enough seam allowance to trim them later. So these would be enough to make three different blocks. Once I've done this, I'll trim them a quarter of an inch away, and as you notice here, I have the starred edges on the outside, so I only have to turn this, these three sides this time. So it's the same process I showed you with the double units, and as you can see, these three edges are turned. This is my design that's centered in, in the middle of the block, so this will be my center hexagon. And now, I'm going to take these units, and I'm going to finish turning this very quickly, and I'm going to literally glue them on top, matching my seam lines to the center because this edge has not been turned, and so that will give me my seam allowance, and since it is sticking out and this is going to be placed over it, I'll be able to applique that in place, and nothing will show. So see, I'm going to take this now, I have two of these, and I'm going to place them right here. All I have to do is line up the outside edge and that point here, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here on those turn seams, match it here, and match it on the outside edge. And since I'm matching from the top, I'm not having to position any blind seams or sew any blind seams, so think everything matches perfectly. And before I stitch anything in place, I know I have a perfectly formed grandmother's flower garden block. See how easy that was? Now, because these were cut from that piece that the two strips were sewn together, it looks like there's a seam here. And now I'll take it to my sewing machine, do a narrow zigzag with a monofilament on top and uh, just a neutral thread in the bottom, do a zigzag without adjusting the length, just the width, and I'll stitch these three segments together. You may cut, uh, catch a little bit of the paper in the seam, but most of the time you don't at all because, see, I can fold it right there. So this paper is not on, on top of each other. They're right beside each other. So the paper is actually butting up because they were cut to the exact size. So once I have stitched these together, then I pick up the completed unit and I'll place it on a background square and then I can stitch this around the entire outside edge on my background square and I'll be able to flip it over, slit the back and, re and re remove all three of these segments. 
Now when I remove these, because it's a double layer of paper, I can actually reuse them and use them in another block. When you are appliquing this down, however, cut your background block a little bit larger than you normally would and then trim it down to size after all of your applique is done. Because then you can square up the block exactly and make any changes in positioning, etc., on the background block so it's going to be centered exactly where you need it to be and to the size you need. So give this method of grandmother's flower garden a try, especially if you're using a mini print for the outside because it's very easy to do and you get very dramatic um, effects very quickly. In that particular quilt that I showed you in the beginning, I did 20 of these in uh, about four hours. So it is much faster to do it this way than it is the traditional method. Give it a try.